Hey everybody. In this quick video, um, I want to give you some helpful tips and tricks on drawing straight lines in digital canvas. Okay. So straight lines is a very important element in any drawing, especially if you have a lot of mechanical elements or architectural elements. Uh, if you can't draw a straight line properly, then your drawing is going to be a little wonky, obviously. But I find that a lot of my students, when they first start uh, drawing, they really suffer with the the harder of getting to a straight line muscle memory, right? They they have some really hard time drawing straight lines and the rest of drawing sort of subsequently uh, is ruined because that sort of first basic layer of either laying out a, a perspective grid or whatever that you need to do with straight lines is not gonna be correct, okay? So instead of suffering through all that, there's some really simple uh, tips that you can remember in trying to accomplish a straight line, whether it's uh, on paper or on a digital canvas like this one, okay? Number one, okay? Number one tip, and let me see if we can get that into camera, is speed. You wanna go fast. Speed is a key to straight lines. Problem with going slow is many reasons, but a couple of first important reasons is that mechanically your hand, as you go slower, you just introduce more chances for deviation, right? Your muscles could be twitching or you're just not steady. Whatever the reason may be, slower you go, chances are it'll be less straight. So that's sort of a human reason for not going slow. Number two reason is way these devices, these uh, digital devices operate. Um, for instance, imagine this grid here represents the digitizer this pen works on, okay? And much like uh, computer monitors, they're made up of these square grids. And I'm sure you heard about the term uh, aliasing when it comes to displays and uh, graphics, right? So aliasing comes into play when, so when you're going up and down, left to right, Drawing a straight line is very easy on a grid system, but as soon as you try to go in a diagonal manner, right? Then, because the grids are square, you have to go up one, over one, go up one, over one. You get this staircasing effect, and we call that aliasing. And that's sort of true for uh, digitizer grids for uh, displays like this. So as the pen moves around this grid, telling the computer where exactly on the surface of the screen it is, it has to conform to the grid. So when the pen is moving up and down or left to right, it conforms to the grid very easily. The moment you have to go diagonally, then you have to jump from one wire to the other or one grid to the other. So it introduces aliasing, especially if you have to go on an angle like this, right? Then you have to go up one over three, up one over four, up one over five. As you can see, the numbers are not even, so the aliasing or the waviness of the line is sort of amplified. So that's a problem, okay? Another problem with drawing slowly on a digitizer like this is that these digitizers, the pen specifically, talks to the board, in this case, and this is Wacom AS pen, if I remember correctly, it communicates to the board 120 hertz, at 120 hertz. So what that means is that 120 times 
per second, each second is telling the digitizer where it is 120 times. So if you think about that, if you happen to draw a line that takes a second to draw, let's say that was a second, that means it this line consists of 120 separate data points, right? So it's going to take all the data points and try to incorporate it into the drawing. So it's going to have more data points. The chances of it being straight are, are less likely. Let's say if I drew the same line, but if I drew it in a, like a tenth of a second, then instead of 120 data points, you only have 12 data points, 120 hertz divided by 10, right? So with less data points, the chances are it's going to be straighter. And so if you can even cut that down to, let's say, six data points, uh, you know, uh, then it's going to be even straighter and you get the idea. So faster is always better because then computer will try to use with use less data points and with later less data points it'll try to make a straighter line so that makes sense right okay so fast number one number two you have to remember your anatomy okay i'm gonna draw you a really quick person here really simple Person. So, so there's your shoulder, there's an arm, there's a forearm, maybe there's the hand right there. Let's see if you can see all of it right there. Okay. So, on an arm like this, uh, you have shoulder, you got the elbow, you got your wrist, and you got your fingers. These are all uh, articulation points on your arm, okay? And let's further uh, think about, let's say we're looking at a top-down view of this person, right? This is the top of the head, this is chest, this is shoulder, and let's say this is the arm. That's a jacked-up hand. So if you lock the shoulder and you make a huge motion with your arm, what's, what's going to happen is that that person is going to move that arm in an arcing motion, correct? So if you're, imagine you're a boxer. You're making a big haymaker. That haymaker comes in a sort of arcing motion, right? What you want to do is we're going to throw a jab. So that's a straight line. When you draw, throw a, a jab, you never lock any of your joints, right? You lock them up at the last moment when you make an impact, but really, you're keeping your all your joints fluid. Does that make sense? So you have to think about the anatomy when you draw a straight line as well. So I'm not going to, if you pop your hand down on the screen and you're from using your fingers you can you can do straight lines but really short really small short ones right you tend to make a lot of arcs same with you if you're locking your elbow you're going to make a bigger arc right and if you lock your you know your shoulder you're going to make a huge arc but obviously this is too small a canvas to show you that what you want to do is you want to make sure all your joints are loose and you're letting your pen tip dictate where they go, how they go, how they move. So I want to make little jabs. Nothing is locked. Also, you want to move the manner that's comfortable for your arm to draw a straight line. In my case, I like to do this 45 degree motion. I want to go this way. I go from chest to outwards. I found that very comfortable for me to do a straight line. So since I know that fact about my body, uh, what I want to do is if I want, you need to draw a straight line in a certain angle, I want to reorient the canvas. And you know, in case like apps like this, uh, if, if it works, 
you can you can move the canvas around you can use a rotation on the canvas to make sure that the line is at the orientation your body is comfortable in drawing okay so make sure that you know what is comfortable sort of vector for your arm to draw a straight line and use that move the canvas around don't fight against your body is what i'm saying so that's number two anatomy number three tip in drawing straight lines is to look at where want to go look where you're going what does that mean okay so let's say if i want to draw from that point to this point i'm not going to look at here i know where i'm going to start from because my hand's there i'm not going to look at my hand because it's going to move fast anyways what i want to do is look at where i want to go i want to look at that I look at that, I aim for that, and the rest of my arm should follow. Right? So you want to look at the target where you're aiming at. Never your hand, never where you started at. You want to look at the target when you draw straight lines. So that's really it, those three things. Number one, speed, go fast. Number two, anatomy, don't lock your joints, you know, find out what's comfortable for you to draw a straight line. And number three, target, look at the target. Look what you're aiming at and aim at it and then draw it towards it. With those three things, you can draw straight lines all day and it'll be very, very straight. Straight enough for, you know, human hands anyways. All right. Okay. Hopefully I can do more of these little quick tips and tricks for you. So keep watching this channel. Thank you. I'll see you later.